Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at the DJI Osmo Action 4's EIS, Electronic Image Stabilization Priority for low light filming. And I'm going to show you a better technique to get the most out of your DJI Osmo Action 4. Ooh, it's gonna be interesting. So here I've prepared two scenarios of three shots. The first one is three dynamic shots and then the second one is three static shots. So let's take a look at first with the full auto EIS enabled and this is how this looks. So this is now fully controlled by the camera and this is what you would use if you have no idea how to actually use a camera. And you can see that it's well it's doing a nice job. The dark areas are dark, the bright areas are way too bright and pay attention to the noise right over here. So if I zoom in and I play this back and forth you can see how much noise you actually have in this section over here. It's not really usable and it really looks bad in this low light situation. Now the second shot is full auto settings but the electronic image stabilization priority is turned off and the image is a little brighter because the shutter speed is slower and the ISO is also lower. That means that there will be less noise and more motion blur because the shutter speed is low. And this is what the electronic image stabilization priority actually does. It prioritizes a faster shutter speed so that you don't have this weird ghosting and halo effects in the highlights like you can see in this example over here. Now I know I'm using the same clip in pretty much every DJI Osmo action video but it really shows the problem with electronic image stabilization and motion blur because the shutter speed is too slow. And this is what the electronic image stabilization priority actually does. It makes sure that the shutter speed doesn't fall too low. Now the third clip is full manual control with 1 50th of a second shutter speed and D-Log M 10-bit video recording and my internal settings in the camera for noise reduction and sharpness was set to the minimum, so to minus two. And we can quickly see that the noise in this image is the most predominant. There's really a lot of noise and you can see it right over here. You know, but this type of noise is actually usable in post-production denoising and I'm gonna show you in this video how you can create that awful looking noisy image into something that looks really professional coming from a teeny tiny camera like this. So how do we now solve this? Well, if you use the D-Log M picture profile and you set the noise reduction and sharpness to minus two and you have manual control over the camera, if it's a static shot, use 1 50th of a second shutter speed for 24 or 25 frames per second recording. And if it's a video where there's a lot of motion, then use the shutter speed of at least 1 100th of a second, preferably 1 200th or faster because that's what DJI recommends. This way you won't get that highlight ghosting effect. So here we are now in DaVinci Resolve. I have the DaVinci Resolve Studio version, so the full paid version. And if you take your video creation seriously, then definitely purchase the full version of DaVinci Resolve. It's going to make your life a lot easier. And some of the effects that I'll be using here are only in the paid version. If you have Premiere Pro or Final Cut, you probably already have these effects in but they only come as a paid version, so you don't have a free version of those softwares. DaVinci Resolve, however, is a free software, but for professional work, you have to purchase the studio one. So this is what I'm using. So this is the 10-bit D-Log M video file coming straight out of the Osmo Action 4. And as you can see, it's very underexposed because there is a bright light source in the scene. Therefore, all the shadows are really dark, which means that I'm going to have to lift up the shadows. And then with this, I'm going to also expose all of the noise. So if we jump into the colors tab in DaVinci Resolve, I already have a color grade setup over here, but currently it's turned off. So the first thing that I would do is I would apply the official LUT from the DJI's website. You can find the link down in the description so you don't have to search the whole internet for it. And what this does, it transforms the whole image from a flat looking D-Log M into a Rec. 709 contrasty and saturated image. But now it's even darker, which means that before this, I'm actually going to add an adjustment node. So if I turn this on, you can see that I've bumped up the gain, bumped up the gamma, I've taken down the lift and also played with the highlights. So if I turn this off 
and then on you can see how much brighter the image is. I've also played a little bit with the white balance. And then at the end I would put the sharpening node. This is where I just add sharpening over here from coming from 0.5 to 0.47 and this is just the right amount of sharpening in my opinion. So before and after, I mean you can hardly notice the difference but if I zoom into the image right over here you can see this is before and this is after. So before, after a lot more clarity. But because of this I'm also enhancing the noise in all the dark areas and adding sharpness on top of that is going to make the noise more powerful and more obvious. So what I need to do is I need to actually add a denoiser before the actual edit. And this is done with this node in the front. So what I've done here is I went into the motion effects and this is the thing that you only have in the Winchy Resolve Studio and I've applied a noise reduction setting. So you can see it right over here. And how does this look in the image? Well, if I zoom in again and if I play the video back, you can see how much noise we have. And now if I turn the noise reduction on, ah, it's much cleaner. So before, right over here, and then after. Now it's completely noise free and if I show you the full screen. So this is now a much clearer high dynamic range image and it's well as much dynamic range as you can squeeze out of the DJI Osmo Action 4. So I hope you guys found this video interesting. I hope you learned something new. If you did hit the like button and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and well I'll leave you with one of these two videos if you want to stay on the channel. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.